Oh yeah, it's finally time to get back to the crossfire. It's been about three months since I've done stuff on it with all the crap that happened with blowing the engine on the Tiburon and the transmission on the Raider. But we got those things ironed out, they're driving around, so it's time to get back to this thing. So today we're going to be starting to weld the cage in. We'll get hopefully the hoop welded in and if there's enough time, we'll get the pillar bars zapped in there as well. But it's going to be a lot of work and not enough time to get stuff done, so we got to get rolling. All right, well, we started off by cleaning up everything. Made sure to get a good sandpaper run on the ends that we're going to weld on. Then we made sure to clean up these pads here, get a good good grind on it so we can zap her in. My key to good welds are clean joints, so let's go and throw this thing back on the tripod and get smashing this thing in. pretty much in like that. What we see in the back of my... Eh, not too bad. But, kind of spread it into place. Feels good.
All right, so I had to make an executive decision here. And instead of that first landing pad, ended up with a one slightly further back. This will allow the um, crossbar that the steering wheel attaches to to remain in the car. And yeah, that will make it work a lot better there. And next thing that we'll have to do is, since having to modify all this, our pillar bar is a little bit too short down here. So my first thought was just take a piece of two by two, weld it in, but we're at a little bit of an angle downhill. So that's not gonna work so well. So we're gonna have to uh, weld up some little plinth blocks and we'll be able to call it a day there. All right, so this is what we're looking at at the front. Just making sure my platform is level. See how is it this way? Looks pretty good. So that's level there. So we'll come in here, we'll tack the plate a little bit here to the pipe. Then we'll pull this whole tube out so we can get a good bead around it. scootered up just a hair so that way we got enough room for the bead around there and just zap that plate fully into the pipe then we'll slide the pipe down put a weld across here and then finish boxing in and that should tie both this plate and this plate together so we'll have an even wider joint so that should work pretty good. I'll have to grab the welder here and actually give her a tack. That should do it that. Now we'll just pull this whole thing out and zap her in good. All right, so we got the first part of the plinth block all zapped in there. Now we'll just have to go through and cut those trapezoidals and we'll be sitting pretty. It's kind of nice when welds actually burn together the way they should. All right, time to get cutting. All right, so this pillar bar, just like the other side, we had to adjust this angle. It was a little bit shallow, so it was coming down at an angle instead of straight down. So the one thing that I actually really like about this tubing bender and why I went with that is this little block that helps pull it around the uh, die. You can leave attached to the bar so you can tweak it in smaller increments, take it out, test it in, put it back without losing where your index was. So that bender over there makes it real worth the while for someone that's not so good at doing things perfectly the first time. But anyways, we got the driver's side pillar bar just about ready to go in and we'll have to get that zapped up just like the passenger one over here. Once we got that zapped in very similar to that, we'll mess around with the uh, crossbar for the steering wheel to attach back to. It's like I got that over here on the garage door half painted up just to keep the rust away and we'll probably have to uh, modify these brackets on the end because they go right up here 
and there probably won't be enough room for it to fit behind the tube. So we'll have to make some minor adjustments. And then we'll get the dash bar in, the windshield bar, and then start dealing with the uprights in the back, and then the crossbars, maybe some foot box bars, pipes that go up to the firewall. They'll help keep the uh, tires off your feet. Since your feet are right behind the tire, if you catch something really hard, it'll jam that tire up into your foot well. So by putting extra bars in there, you protect your feet. And the less broken feet, the better. All right, our foot pads are in. Kind of all cleaned up. Looking pretty good. Welding's not too bad. Not the most perfect work, but she's definitely got hot enough. That's still too hot to finish cleaning up that. But anyways, that's probably going to take care of it for this time. All right. So that's going to do it for today. We've got our bars in, bar, and we got the roll bar in the back. So we're pretty darn getting close there. Eh, give or take. But anyways, we'll be uh, taking care of this. And next time uh, we'll be dealing with the putting the steering wheel bar back in and maybe some of these above bars here, some of the crossbars, and see where we're at there. Maybe even get enough time for the rear support. But that's going to be all for this one. And I guess I will see you guys later.